Dungeon Masters and long-time Dungeons and Dragons players, what legendary move in a campaign will live on forever in infamy, good or bad? Hawaii-inspired campaign with were creatures and stuff of that like. The entire campaign went as follows. Group boats out to round key for a vacation on some islands. The moment they get there, they find out that were beasts have been running rampant, and that there is always a full moon. Group needs to go the long way to the main city, a Brinlock, because the King's Guard is trying to stop the infection from getting there. Group traverses around the island, fighting various creatures. First, a helpful Arachra they meet becomes a were vulture without realizing it and they have to put him down. They are attacked by a were octopus on the beach and learn that the infection is the work of either imps, goblins, or tieflings. They fight a were scorpion in the forest learning it's not just animals that can spread it, but bugs too. And all while this is happening, they pissed off a crazy so living on a beach early on, so he stops by randomly to kill them. They get to a Brinlock, where they learn from Meros that they've successfully kept out all were beasts except one, and task the group with killing it. The group comes across it, but it's a male drider, not a were beast. They try to kill it, but it escapes. The group returns to the mare, he compensates them and gives the task to his own police force. The group F's off and does side quests to get stronger. They help several people around the city. Some dwarfs gave them weapons. They help a church, where the matriarch, Mother June, teaches the paladin some new healing spells. And they aid an artisan named Peterson with money issues, giving them all some good stat buffs. All in all, well played out trip. The group island hops, but come back to the city when they find out that it is, in fact, ancient goblins creating the were beasts and placing a full moon mirage over the islands. They go to Telos, find out that he's been captured by the goblins, who are now in control of the city. They hold him hostage and demand a surrender. The group fails all their charisma checks and drop their weapons to spare the life of the mayor. The goblins take the weapons and let the mayor go. Surprise, Mo was a master goblin warlock in disguise. He and his cronies were creating the werebeasts to use as weapons and were keeping the city clean so that they could evacuate it and infect boatfuls of people traveling around the world. As the group tries to reason with Oz, the drider appears and starts beating the piss out of him. The group uses the confusion to grab their weapons and launch a full on battle against the creatures. They team up with the drider and chase the warlock throughout the capitol building leading into an epic dungeon battle. The goblin falls to the ground dead. The drider transforms into a human, the artisan from before. It was at this point, my paladin caught on. He just called me a mother effer and leaned back in his chair, much to the confusion of the other party members. And so I ended with the following epilogue. As you stand above the body of the fallen warlock, you sigh a sigh of relief. This may have been your most dangerous quest yet. A bite from many of your foes could have turned you into a vulture, an octopus, a scorpion, a lizard, a chameleon, so many seemingly harmless creatures. And as you stand over the fallen goblin, his green skin sagging off the corpse, you look at the artisan with hope, knowing that no matter what, the island is always under the protective watch of Peterson, the friendly neighborhood driver man. Audible confusion from the group followed by overdramatic anger. The past 6 months had all been a giant effing meme on my part. It was all a Spider-Man reference, paced out so they would forget enough about what they had just done to not notice it. Hell, the locations were all anagrams. Round Key is New York. A Brinlock is Brooklyn. The characters were also referenced without notice. Mother June is Aunt May. The angry gnome who ran the printing press was Briar Bradley Barton. And then there was the Terramancer on the beach. An earth wizard controlling sand, the Sandman. It was so stupid it was awesome and they say I can't dungeon master anymore. In the finale of our Star Wars smuggler campaign, I tricked the rest of the party into signing up for the Intergalactic Wrestling Federation, which I had secretly founded using the credits I swindled out of them throughout the campaign, and get their asses kicked by the superstar duo Ranker Rogan and Macho Mandalorian. Said wrestling match was also the opening ceremony for the first annual Spacavision song contest, which my character was coincidentally also hosting and sponsoring. <laughs> Playing a World of Darkness tabletop game, Vampire, Dark Ages. I rolled a 4-1 botch 111 dice with two specialties. 
Normal difficulty. For those who are not familiar with the system, I rolled 11d10 dice. I needed to roll a 4 or greater for a success. Any ones negate a success. If you have no successes and roll ones then you botch. Think critical failing in D&D. So on 11 dice, I rolled 4 ones, and then 7 twos and 3s. The odds on that roll are something like a billion to 1. Then there was the critical self-control fail that ended up leading the entire party into the underworld. Hey if a necromancer gets the chance to go to the underworld they are going to take it. Then there was the time I was playing an old lady witch who flew around using telekinesis. She was trapped in a hallway with two clockwork soldiers who had swords for arms between her and the exit. The only other option was an obvious trap. So I cannonball into the two soldiers, and managed to only hit one of the four swords pointed at me and take one of the guys down the stairs and kill them. I was only two damage off of instant death. It was great. Same which also had weather control magic. She was at the bottom of a mountain and there was an avalanche coming. I could clearly fly away, but that isn't fun. There are armies at the bottom of the mountain that I would like to disrupt. I look at the avalanche, and then look at the armies. I turn to the game master and he can see I am about to ask him something dumb, but allows me to go on. I ask so. What I am thinking is. What is an avalanche but a blizzard on the ground right? So can I use my telekinesis to push some of the snow into the air and then use my weather control to take over and control the avalanche? The look of pure, unadulterated WTF on my game master's face was epic. It will be surpassed in a moment though. He tells me well roll it I guess. Music to my ears. I roll my telekinesis and get like 7 successes. Okay you have lifted some snow and ice into the air. Roll weather control. I have 10 dice. For those who know the world of darkness system, 10s, with a specialty, usually explode and give you another roll to see if you get an extra success, and if you roll another 10 you get to roll again. We have a house rule, that a 10's double. 10 dice. 14 successes. This was when the look of WTF got even greater. Sigh so okay I guess you have control of the avalanche what do you want to do with it? I make it jump over myself and the party and crash into the armies below, effectively killing an entire army. That is how Mabel the witch got the magic specialty of creative misunderstanding. I've told this story here a few times, but it will always live on in infamy with the group I played with at the time. I sure if I talk to some of them, who I haven't seen in years, they'd remember it. I was a player at the time, another player, my friend Cody was playing an illiterate elf barbarian raised by orcs named Fruitcake. The party was tasked with dealing with this shady carnival that people were disappearing from, or coming back wrong we had fought the fortunate beast tamer, and strongman. It was difficult, but fun. After the fight, we retreated into one of the tents. Turns out it was the fortunate living space and she must have practiced potion making in her spare time as she had a huge wall of meticulously labeled potions and poisons on a nice display. As we were resting, Fruitcake said, Well I'm thirsty. And Cody said, I want to start downing the entire wall of potions like a sorority girl on her 21st birthday doing a line of shots. What do I roll? Oh, another, I ran a one shot with roll it and go characters. That is, we assigned numerical values to race, class, alignment, everything. Then we rolled straight for each base stat, so if you were a barbarian and ended up rolling a 5 in strength, you were stuck. It is a hilarious way to run a session. Anyway, I had a big group, 7 or so players, and the whole group was laughing as they got their characters. They soon realized that everyone in the group was either plain evil or chaotic evil. The group just about died laughing. Finally, the session actually started, and one of the characters immediately tried to break into a shop to steal all the goods. The other characters got in on the action. And then, one player who had been fairly silent this whole time slammed his fist down on the table and shouted, Stop. Thieves. I command you. There was stunned silence, and we all looked at him. He grinned sheepishly, held up his character sheet, and announced, I'm a lawful good paladin. It took a good 20 minutes for everyone to stop laughing. I was playing a halfling with a pet wolf large enough to ride on. I was an antisocial ass and when the group found itself cornered against a wall of flame over a deep cavern, I opted to leap the flames and escape. As I do, 
Another halfling character who had been obnoxiously hitting on me tried jumping on the wolf's back with me. The dungeon master lets me know that the wolf can only make it over with one of us, so I kicked the other guy off and the character fell to his death. There was a stunned silence in the room. That was my second time playing. The characters had reached epic levels, and had just gained their first really super cool abilities. In one of the encounters, their enemy summoned the mightiest earth elemental they could, basically a mountain, and infused it with demonic energy. The party's warriors battled it, but they weren't able to injure it, and were getting desperate. Then the party's mage cast a spell called Nailed to the Sky, which teleports an enemy into geosynchronous orbit, where they usually die by suffocation and pressure. The earth elemental was bothered by neither of these, but had no way to get down. Which is how my campaign world gained a new, evil, moon. A friend of mine was dungeon mastering for the first time, all of us were new to D&D 5e, and we encountered a predator-like enemy with energy blasts or something. It was 3 of us against him and nearly all of us were less than 5 health at level 3. I got flung off against a tree after jumping on his back with a dagger and sinking it into his neck. Dungeon Master said it sunk in only a little bit, but it stayed there as he advanced toward me for a final blow. I wanted to use my reaction to say something to him and the Dungeon Master let me roll to persuade him to take the dagger, rip it across his neck, and kill himself. Huh, okay whole grain wheat craft. Go ahead and roll he said, obviously going to say no whether I rolled well or not. I rolled a natural 20, who saw that coming, and it worked. Turns out he was at 15ish health towards the end and it finished him off. I never did finish that campaign, but I remember my rogue got some sweet arm blades out of it. This is my greatest act of roleplay. It was in a homebrew province in the Forgotten Realm setting. I played a cleric of Lathander back when Lathander was still a thing. Through the quest line the party was given ownership of an abandoned keep and small lands by the local count. The dungeon masters meant for it to cause friction in the group but none of the other four players wanted it. So I took it. I had plans to benefit the church. After that we left to go back to the main trade hub that was our home base. The dungeon master asked if I wanted to go to the cathedral to let the high priest know about my new church. I said no, I'm going to the temple of Joaquin, goddess of commerce. He stopped the game and asked me in the other room so I can explain my plan. He did that a lot in our previous campaign cause the rouge was pretty rougy. So my plan was to have Walkie Knights to set up a trade school and rebuild it. Give permission to Knights of Torm, and various other churches to set up their own churches in exchange for protection and to bring in skilled followers to benefit the new township. Dungeon Masters did not like but he let me roll for it. I went church to church roll after roll, then finally I got to my own. The party listened as I finally explained my plan. Final roll 19 charisma modifier of 4. I got my township in motion. The dungeon masters was against it cause it would have ruined his other campaign ideas. So periodically I would have to roll to make checks against disasters that happened in construction and conflict of churches. When it was finished. We all got to see it for the first time. The party was approached by a messenger. We go to the main keep and there was a council formed. I was to be named bishop of the new Lathander church as well as keeper overseer for the town. I accepted. I then immediately ripped up my character sheet. In the interest of roleplay I had reached the highest level a cleric could hope for. My adventuring was over.